Hey guys, we're here today in Dragon's Dogma 2, going over ways to improve your quality of life in the game with these 7 tips. Tip number 1 is how to avoid chatty pawns on the road when you're venturing in the open world. No doubt you've come across these pawns wandering down or traveling on roads who interrupt you mid-sprint or jog to give you their sales pitch on why they should be a part of your group. As you level up higher and higher in the game, you have less need of pawns that are randomly out in the world because you have very specific skill sets on your pawns that are not replaceable by some random scrub out in the wild. But alas, they have the power to force you to stop anyway, which can grow fairly annoying. Anytime you see one of these pawns, simply unsheathe your weapons, and they will not initiate a conversation with you. If they detect that you're in combat mode, they'll have no interest in striking up a conversation, but as soon as you put your weapons away, they will then initiate the conversation with you, so make sure you don't sheathe your weapons while still in their proximity. Tip number two is how to harvest things consecutively at a quicker rate. If you've come across ore nodes or piles of debris and interact with it to harvest, sometimes it will have the ability to harvest them a second or third time, but you have to reinitiate the animation and go through the entire harvesting phase again. Regardless, if you know if the node has one, two, or three harvesting opportunities, if you simply hold your interaction key the first time you harvest it, your character will immediately go into harvesting the next items if they are there, with a shorter animation and no need to have the stand up and crouch down time between, or the time to pull out your pick and put it away. This can make it a lot less tedious to get all the ore in a cave, which means you won't skip nodes like I was doing and potentially missing out on some of those precious metals. You might also end up a little bit richer if you're not skipping debris piles because you don't feel like going through all of the animations to get what gold might be in them. Tip number three has to do with escort quests, and it's simply to take an ox cart with your escort as they will just teleport right along with you or to use fairy stones to your destination since they will also teleport with you through that method. Escort quests can be a pretty decent way to get rift crystals if you're low on them and also help build affinity with that NPC, but they're one of the quests that get ignored a lot of the time because it's a hassle to take the NPC from one location to the other at their slow speeds and with all the enemies out in the open world. So using the ox carts or the fairy stones can make this a lot simpler and an easy way to get the quests completed and not have escort quests be something you avoid like the Dragon's Plague. Now tip number four should give you aid in combat and help you take down enemies, whether your pawns have died and you're trying to travel back to town to get more, but perhaps are being blocked by a large creature that's gonna be difficult to hit by or a large group of mobs. Or if you have all your pawns and you're simply trying to take down something that's a little bit higher than you or a little bit too tough for where you're at in the stage in the game and you just need some extra help. Now the idea for this tip actually comes from a short section of a video I saw from Boomstick Gaming where he would pick up a wandering pawn or a guard in the city and be able to carry them to fight locations and have them fight with him. Now this is a helpful tip from Boomstick Gaming that can aid you in combat when you need it most. But in the open world, you can also come across these groups of four adventurers, sometimes sitting at campsites, battling mobs, or walking down roads. Now here, if you pick up a certain member of them, the entire group will follow you, and you can lead them on to the enemies you're looking to take down, and have a group of four adventurers to help you out when you're needing that extra edge in combat. Now you can't pick up any member of the group, since all of them are not equal, and they simply don't care about most of them. But there is a leader of the group, typically the one at the front of the pack, and if you pick up this one, the rest of the group will follow, and you can lead them to wherever your destination is. And for added effect, you can even throw this carried adventure into the enemies to cause some damage right out the gate. Tip number five is to zoom in on your map into the fog of war areas and you can actually see the roads and the pathways through the fog of war so you can see which way to get to your destination and make sure you don't go down any dead end roads or go down the wrong path even though it might seem like the right one on your way to your quest locations or points of interest because running into packs of mobs that you were not looking to fight or going down the wrong roads can really take up a lot of time in Dragon's Dogma since there are mobs around every corner. You can cut down and streamline a lot of your playtime by making sure you're going down the right pathway and getting to your destination as quick as possible and with as little detours as possible. And all of it is easily accomplished by looking through that fog of war and seeing the outline of pathways and roads and plotting your course from there. Tip number six has to do with inventory management. No doubt you've sent something to your pawns at some point or taken something from them and had to go through the tediousness of individually selecting each item and selecting its quantity to send over to which pawn. Now, if you've gotten used to this inventory system, you may not have noticed that when you're depositing or withdrawing from storage or when you're selling to a merchant that you can use shift to select multiple items at the same time. And when you send it to storage or draw it out of storage, it will pull all of that said item. So you don't have to individually select each item or select the quantity and you can quickly mass move items into and out of your storage or to a merchant. This can help out greatly when you're trying to move mass amount of harvesting materials or you're trying to clear out storage space because you've hit the cap on your item limit. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in our inventories since shift goes into the combined item menu, but hopefully Capcom adds this at some point 
since it would greatly improve quality of life if we could send things or take things from our pawns in mass quantities. And tip number seven will help you get even more tips in the game that I don't cover in this video. By deselecting any tracked quest, you can have all of your load menus when you reload a save or you log into the game give you lore information or tips about the game. Some of these tips can be pretty basic, but some can be fairly interesting, like the indication that each of us have different berries in our world, so we may in the end be able to combine different items in our world and not all see the same set of harvestables, which means maybe we should be gifting each other's berries with our pawns every time we use them. Now that would only matter if the berries actually mix and combine into different consumables, but it does make you think that maybe each of us is getting different drop rates and different items more commonly than the others. So it may be interesting to start actually using the pawn system to trade items of interest that you may not have as much access to in your world. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and at least one of these tips was interesting to you or was useful to you to improve your quality of life in the game and make things get a little bit more streamlined and a little bit smoother in your gameplay so you can maximize the efficiency every time you're in the game. If you've got any tips you've come across that would improve the quality of life of other Arisen in the game, please post them down in the comments so we can help everyone have the best and smoothest experience possible in Dragon's Dogma 2. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.